Hey guys, thanks for checking out my very first quarantine vlog. My name is David and I'm just a Christian who loves Jesus and that's all you really need to know about me. So I don't have a very interesting life, but maybe there's something I will share today that you may find interesting and helpful. So obviously, we know we are in some crazy times and this coronavirus is much bigger than what anyone expected in the very beginning. And I don't know if you guys have been following the news about the Samaritan's Purse in New York State. Uh, basically, Samaritan's Purse is an evangelical Christian organization and they are a nonprofit that provides, you know, physical aid uh, to people around the world, uh, refugees and people who are homeless and etc. So if you've ever heard of Operation Christmas Child, it is organized by Samaritan's Purse. Now, I don't know if I would, you know, completely stand with them 100% in their, you know, theology and their ministry philosophy and their political views and etc. Um, you know, but we can't deny that they are doing great things and um, no one can deny that, that they're doing good work. They're helping a lot of people. Uh, New York right now has almost 300,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and almost 20,000 deaths. You know, it's a true tragedy. And Samaritan's Purse is trying to be the Good Samaritan and they partner with Mount Sinai Hospital in New York to set up a field hospital and they treated over 300 patients. So take a look at this video. This one was set up uh, in March by Christian humanitarian relief group Samaritan's Purse. They did it to help with the surge of COVID-19 hospitalizations. City Council Speaker Corey Johnson and other officials have been calling on Mount Sinai to close the field hospital over the group's practice of requiring volunteers to sign an anti-gay statement of faith. Okay, but since last month, there has been some angry LGBTQ activists, you know, who want them to stop and stop their work and, you know, stop helping people who need to get treated because apparently Samaritan's Purse is anti-LGBT. They are apparently anti-LGBT because they are a Christian organization that, you know, requires their own volunteers and staff to be Christian and hold the Christian traditional view of marriage. So Samaritan's Purse, you know, their statement of faith includes a section like this, quote, We believe God's plan for human sexuality is to be expressed only within the context of marriage, that God created man and woman as unique biological persons made to complete each other. And God instituted monogamous marriage between male and female as the foundation of the family and the basic structure of human society. For this reason, we believe that marriage is exclusively the union of one genetic male and one genetic female. Okay, so I don't want to get too into the whole political, you know, debate about same-sex marriage and, you know, etc. But, I mean, can you believe this? There are activists who want to stop Christian, Christian volunteers who are sacrificing their time and their lives and their health to help other people who are suffering with COVID-19 because they hold a Christian belief about marriage. And take a look at this clip from one of their LGBT activist group leaders, Marty Cummings. Hi, I'm Marty Gold Cummings and I'm calling upon Dr. Kenneth Davis and Dr. David Reich, the CEO and president of Mount Sinai, one of the foremost medical institutions in our country, I'm calling upon them to amend the relationship that they have with Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse is a bigoted, anti-Muslim, anti-LGBTQ institution run by Franklin Graham. It's an organization that has used its platform to instill bigoted beliefs into the world. It is shameful that this organization is using a crisis as an excuse to peddle their anti-Muslim and anti-LGBTQ agenda. I am calling upon Mount Sinai to require that if their relationship with Samaritan's Purse continues, that Samaritan's Purse stops the practice of making volunteers sign a pledge saying that they will have a statement of faith a statement of faith saying that they 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 do not believe in 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 the LGBTQ lifestyle. It is homophobic and transphobic, and it is wrong. And this organization is about to expand from 68 beds to hundreds of beds in the city. I urge you and demand you to require Samaritan's Purse to drop this part of their agenda immediately. Okay, so apparently Christians who do not believe in the LGBT lifestyle are bigots and shouldn't be helping people who are suffering and dying. And that is absolutely crazy. 
And for those of you who don't know what the definition of bigotry is, Oxford Dictionary defines it in this way, intolerance toward those who hold different opinions from oneself. Okay, so I admit, you know, there are some stupid and rude Christians out there, just as there are stupid and rude people in the LGBT community and of other religions and other worldviews, right? But are those who do not believe and agree with the LGBT lifestyle bigots? No, I don't think so. And no, Christians are not taught to, you know, hate gay people or hate anyone. Christians are instructed to even love their um, neighbors and to even love their enemies. But this doesn't mean that they should deny their own Christian faith to agree with the LGBT lifestyle. In fact, bigotry would be you trying to stop good Christian citizens who are volunteering to, you know, help suffering and dying people because they don't believe what you believe. I mean, if you want to fight for same-sex marriage and equality for LGBT, you know, that's fine, okay. Um, you can do that in appropriate settings. Uh, but you want to stop Christians and Christian organizations from helping out during this global pandemic? I mean, there are over 300,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases and almost 20,000 deaths in New York State. The state needs all the help they can get. And because of their pressure, apparently the field hospital had to shut down sooner than expected and the LGBT activists are actually celebrating this, that these volunteers are finally kicked out. And this is what their leader, Ann Northrop, had to say. I'm Ann Northrop from Reclaim Pride. We were here holding a press conference to talk about Franklin Graham and Samaritan's Purse finally being kicked out of the city. We are very angry that they were here and we are going to pursue the question of how did they get here. We hold the governor, the mayor, and Mount Sinai Hospital uh, responsible for this. No, this is really sad. And just to be clear, Samaritan's Purse does not discriminate by rejecting patients who are not Christians. So their president, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, had this to say, quote, It's true, for 50 years, we have asked our paid staff to subscribe to a statement of faith, but we have never asked any of the millions of people we have served to subscribe to anything. In other words, as a religious charity, while we lawfully hire staff who share our Christian beliefs, we do not discriminate in who we serve. We have provided billions of dollars of medical care and supplies and food and water and emergency shelter without any conditions whatsoever. Our Christian faith compels us like the biblical Good Samaritan to love and serve everyone in need regardless of their faith or background. Well, moving on to another topic, Itaewon Class. I'm sure many of you have watched or at least heard of this show, Itaewon Class. And if you're not aware, Itaewon Class is a Korean drama on Netflix that is super hot right now across the globe. Here's a sneak preview. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be honest, I didn't actually watch all 16 episodes, but my mom and sister watched it, and I just watched the first few episodes in the end. Yeah, so I don't want to share any spoilers if you haven't watched it and you're planning on watching it, and I don't think I would share anything significant um, or any significant spoilers. But anyways, there is a supporting character who is transgender, um, if you watched, you would know, and a guy who becomes a girl, pretty much. And at the end of the drama, this transgender and another guy gets into a romantic relationship. Now, when I watched this scene, I thought, you know, it was really cute and adorable and I felt happy for them inside and, you know, I felt like it was a good ending. There's a lot of good character development in this drama and, you know, we're led to see, you know, what this, you know, person had to go through their difficult life and difficult circumstances. And naturally, you know, we would want uh, them to persevere and to see them happy, right? Yeah, and so that's how I felt. And then the next day, during my devotional, I was reading Romans chapter 1. And this is what I came across. Verse 22. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to their shameful lusts. 
even their women exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. So the Bible is God's word and God declares in this passage clearly that I just read homosexual relations are sinful desires, uh, shameful lusts, sexual impurity, unnatural, and it's almost just shocking how harsh the vileness of sin, of this sin, is described here, and at least that's how God sees it and feels about it. It's sin, it is shameful, it is dishonorable, it is vile. Um, but as I watched Itaewon class, you know, they do such a good job glorifying what is dishonorable to God to the point that in my heart, I felt like I was applauding this sin. And this is the power and influence of media and culture on our minds and morality. You know, we are so utterly depraved and morally confused and the entertainment that we consume uh, desensitizes what is sinful and vile in the eyes of God. You know, the shows that we watch and the crude humor that we laugh at can make us vulnerable to degrading morality. And if we laugh, you know, too often at things that God would not find funny, our moral perception will begin to blur. You know, we will become so depraved that we cannot even tell good apart from sin. Now, I'm not trying to single out, you know, the homosexuals as, you know, the worst of sinners, because to be frank, the Bible uh, calls out heterosexual sins and other forms of sexual immorality like pornography, addiction, adultery, lust, and the list goes on. But my point is this, is that you know, we need to be in God's word and our minds need to be renewed each day or we will lose all sensitivity towards sin. You know, we need to ask God every day to increase our appetites for holiness and the things of God. Well, that's it for today. And thanks for tuning in. And I hope it was edifying to you in some way. God bless you and stay safe.